I just realised I was on mute for like the last minute, so I did this whole spiel and none of you heard it. Isn't that a good start? Anyways... <laughs> hey everybody. Welcome to Gab's Dojo. Um, and it's been a while. Yeah, I know, epic fail, right? On my grand return. Um, so, on a serious note, um, over the last few months, there's been a lot of challenges that's come my way, um, both in a personal and a professional manner. So that kind of led to the hiatus that I took longer than I anticipated. I didn't realize it's been like three months since I did the last lesson. And there was some temptation, to be honest, to kind of like leave it behind. But I really don't like leaving things unfinished. So I just like, Sam, why are you timing out Mark already? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, um, so I wanted to make sure I have time um, to actually finish the last few topics I had on the dojo so for the time being, so that I, I have at least one complete program. Um, so, this is kind of like the first of three mini lessons. Reason being is that three of the last four topics I want to talk about bleed heavily into each other, and... I didn't want to do a super lesson of all three because I'll just send you all to sleep in about 20 minutes. And there wasn't enough um, material on each topic to cover one full lesson. Unless, of course, you all ask me tons of questions. So, this is going to be the first of what's called a mini lesson. Um, so, it shouldn't be as long as the usual lessons unless, as I said, you ask loads of questions. Um, and the first topic we're going to be looking at is pattern recognition. What mic do I have? Uh, it's just a basic Microsoft Live Chat mic. Nothing special. And thank you for the voice props, gamers. So, um, pattern recognition is exactly what it is. It is recognizing patterns. So in terms in fighting games, we'll be recognizing the things that an opponent does in a certain situation. Um, easy examples are when an opponent hits you with a down one and then they throw you, um, or if they drop a combo and then they walk up to you and throw you as you're getting up to make up for the damage lost. Um, now, once a person does something like that, um, a number of times, uh, I say usually two to three times, that's where you know there is a potential or a confirmed pattern. So once you recognize this pattern, it's then up to you um, to do something about it um, in order to exploit it or counter it, whatever. And being able to do this effectively kind of leans heavily into um, adapting, because I know that's a very hard skill for a lot of people. Um, being able to adapt, especially in short sets, longer sets is easier. Welcome, Lusty. Now, to be completely honest, pattern recognition is not something I can easily teach because it's based on individual perception. Um, and it's also not an easy skill to uh, learn. Are you on time? Technically, you're late, but I'll let you off. But once you kind of recognize um, patterns, once you start seeing it and you start responding to things, um, it will elevate your gameplay for certain, no doubt. So this lesson is going to be a bit different. I really hope this works because I spent a lot of time trying to fix this. But usually you would expect me to go have the game on and I will jump into training mode and then have the beautiful Miss Briggs on screen and then showcase whatever I'm about to teach you. This time is going to be different. I have a recent set that I had um, with like another Katana player. Um, first to two, deliberately. And what we're going to do is we are going to go through the matches and you guys watching are essentially going to determine what patterns you see and then we will talk about it um, I'll share my views and what I was thinking during the match um, or matches I should say 
and then yeah a bit of back and forth in terms of what we see and what we can do so that does mean quite a bit of uh, participation from you guys um, and let you just say what you see so when I start a match I'll pause each round and I'll just ask you is there any patterns that you see from my opponent um, or any potential if not even you don't see a pattern but maybe something potential to form into a pattern later something like that um, so <laughs> it's a chat panicking now that I've asking you to do stuff <laughs> you don't have to sit there and pretend to listen to me two kittens crawling all over me trying to steal my food wow alright so I'm gonna load a match um, and let me know if the audio is okay and then yeah watch the match watch the katana player and see I'll just call her she make it easier and see what kind of things that she is doing and any potential patterns we can pick up um, just as a disclaimer I apologize for some of my play because it's rusty and definitely made a bit of scrubby errors but I don't apologize for my character choice all right, let's see if this works. Right, can you all hear that okay? And see that okay? I'm guessing from the no, that's a yes. <laughs> You're not a fan of seeing Hanzo, I'm guessing? Damn. I need this lesson to rank up. Yeah, all right. Everyone's hating on Scorpion. Fine, fine, fine. Um, did the audio sound okay though? Well, the audio of the match. <laughs> I'm pretending that like, Mac is Scorpion. Let me throw up real quick. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's get uh, all the jokes out of the way. I've never seen someone that likes to play with school. <laughs> anyway, guys, pay attention now. First round, watch Katana. Any sort of patterns that she does in her play that we can potentially pick up on. And after the first round, I'll pause and then I'll just ask to say what you see. And just like that, Dan shows up. How's it going, Dan? Hope everything is well with you. Anyway, Dan, just because uh, you joined in, just going to give a quick rundown. Um, lesson is going to be on pattern recognition and what I want you guys to do. This is a set that I had with a Katana player, first to two. And we're basically going to watch it and I want you guys to... I'm going to pause the video at different times and I want you guys basically to feedback what you see. Um, any certain patterns that you see the Katana player doing or any kind of... Um, actions that they do that could potentially become patterns um, so yeah a class that you actually have to participate in and welcome blue how's it going yeah, that's a good way to summarize it off observation round all right and for anyone who's concerned about it don't worry there's no wrong answers about this it's all perception you say what you see you might see things that i never saw when i was actually fighting so anyway i'm going to play the video now I'll pause after the end of the first round and then we'll have a brief discussion. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Right, let's do that again. Cool. Shall Khan escape your vengeance? <laughs> Can't see the patterns too fast. <laughs> hey, Gabriel, how's it going? Right, pay attention, guys. What's the katana doing, and then any patterns you might see? Yeah. 
Analyzing Kitana, Luke. Okay, first round over. <laughs> Sarang, stop bullying Mark. <laughs> okay, so I could see answers were flying in. Jeez, people want to thread them out as it happens. Okay, so lots of back one fours into low fans, yeah. Um, loves jumping off to back one four. Trying to down one into throw a lot. Um, also stops blocking after you block a poke. A lot of jump-ins. Just jumping every chance he gets and disrespecting frames. Like to try and open up with low pokes. Uh, nice mix How can you tell about disrespecting frames then? Well, lastly, if you study your frame data, you probably would know. <laughs> but Dan kind of summed it up, mashing win minus. But okay. So things we have noticed is back one four into jump, um, going for poke into throw, um, and quite a lot of jumps. And a what else did you say? Stops blocking after I block a poke. Okay. Yeah, definitely jumps a lot, stuff in mid-string for fake pressure and mashing. Okay, so that's a lot of tendencies. Now the thing is, um, when it comes to what's called pattern recognition, is when they do the same thing, like maybe twice, maybe three times, um, that's when you kind of know it's a legitimate pattern and that's when they're, how they do their offense. So then it'll be up to me if I figure it out. Um, how to exploit that. Uh, yes, your minus when a poke gets blocked generally. So if you're poke back, you're disrespecting. But yeah, essentially, in theory, it's not your turn when you block a poke. Yeah. The queen of disrespect. <laughs> Do you have a question, gamers? Where you can see that we're doing down four, down one a lot, then trying to grab and start a string after you block, then you punish it a couple of times and start going for down three instead. Okay, so generally, especially the key ones that most people have noticed, down three into throw or back one four into uh, jump, which is the key ones that most people have noticed. Um, what would you start doing about it? What would be a potential solution? Doesn't have to be for Scorpion, can be for any character. Um, if you want Scorpion specific ones, obviously, yeah. Um, but yeah, what solutions would you say to avoid the whole down free into throw or into the back one four into jump? What can we do to exploit that? Planning meters correctly so she stops jumping, yeah. Duck into punish, yeah, for the throw. Neutral dark after you block the poke, yeah. By the way, welcome 4D to the stream. Hope you are. Instant jump teleport. Damn, big brain. Reactive poke on your own or a quick mid like Jax's forward free. 
instant jump teleport to counter the throw. That's an interesting one. All right, let's go into round two. Anti area down two. That's a good one to solve back one four. All right. Counter your poke into a safe special if you have one. Yep. Back up when you poke to make him whiff and grab and punish. You can also jump after you block a poke, right? Yeah, you can. Sometimes you might get clipped, but yeah, you can do that. All right. That's a lot of ideas. While it's a lot of great ideas, what makes it tricky is this is literally just round one of a match. So a lot of the things that you just said, some are definitely patterns. Some of it is just information that you need to take forward to what happens going on later. By the way, let's watch round two and then see what else you see regarding patterns. If there's so, anything that you definitely recognize as a pattern, any other potential thing you need to look forward to. <laughs> Your head's to hurt it. Why? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Your fate rests here. Round two. Fight. <laughs> Pop quiz though. Um, that teleport that the scorpion did. Press one if you think that was on purpose, or press two if you think it was random. Down goes for the one. Purposely done. One, one. One. All of them going for the ones because amplify. Okay. I will really answer a bit later. But yeah, everyone going for the ones. Of course, Sarang Bay has to be the contrarian. Anyway, continue watching. Earn my respect. Stop deleting box messages. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. First match done. Katana wins. So, um, in that second round, was there any other patterns, any other things that people uh, noticed? Any potential things to take going forward? <laughs> Katana was mashing, mashing, mashing. Okay. Uh, La Katana use jumping one. Mm -hmm. Staggering back one when trying to catch you out with back one low fan amplified. Checking Scorpion with a lot of pokes. When jumping punch hits, Katana has confirmed to a combo. It's a doji lesson more because I'm kickboxing. <laughs> now, if you had the same pattern, but you started cancelling his pokes into special moves to catch you off guard, a lot of downfalls into fat. I wasn't confirming her back two stream because she didn't. She did the fan left on block. Started to use back two towards the end. Okay. A lot of good things noticed. So, um, if for example we take the um, trying to catch out the back one low fan amplified and check his scorpion with a lot of pokes, is there anything that we can do about that? The 
also she never went for katana's two overheads. Um, the scorpion isn't using back three. Why? Good question. Maybe he forgot. He waited a bit after his jump after waiting. He did a string. Gab, are you the scorpion? Yes, I am. Mark confirms. Um, flawless block. Yep. Welcome, Yonsei. Uh, Scorpion can go for things like forward three, it has longer range than a pokes, and can get the counter. <laughs> oh, we're back three. All right, good stuff. Now, question to you guys. Would you prefer it for you to finish analysing the rest of the set and then I go through it all afterwards? Or would you want to finish one match and then I analyse that same match as well, going through what was going through my mind, thoughts and feelings as I played it? Um, so it's almost like comparing notes per match. Um, the former or the latter, which would you prefer? When he tries to do Amplifier Phantos and you don't fall as block, you can back up because he jumped every time. After a whiff punishes, jump two. Okay, per match, per match, per match, per match. Per match, it seems to be the winner. Oh, I forget the first one. Okay, alright, so I'm going to rewind back to the first match. And I will talk to you guys about what I saw, what I noticed, um, and what came to mind. Right. Let's see if this works. Kitano wins. Shao Kahn escaped your vengeance. Something I regret deeply. Next time, forget mercy. Round one, fight. <laughs> Okay, so at this point in a match, that's when I first noticed that this is the very first pattern, well, I say very first, this is one of the early patterns that was um, discovered in the match. Um, when going for that string back one four, she went into Amplified Fans, um, but the key thing is when the low fans hit, she neutral jumped every time. Well, I say every time. but did it twice in a row in a very short period of time. So, with that in mind, I kind of figured, okay, that's a general pattern that she wants to go for. Um, so, I should keep that in mind. If I get knocked down again by an amplified low fan, I can anti-air with like down two, or standing one, or whatever. But yeah. So, moving on. Yeah, it's all up to as well. I really should have amplified that spear, but never mind. While that's not a pattern, that's the first time I knocked Katana down to the ground and immediately woke up roll. So, while it's not a pattern, I store it in the back of my mind that, okay, she woke up after the first time I knocked her down. Maybe she's a wake up happy person. And if that's true going forward, that's something that I may be able to exploit later. Ah, sad times, dropping that combo. Should have committed to that punish there. Right. No. People said down free into throw, which great, no, it's the same thing. Their addition to that is though is that she immediately threw a low fan afterwards, 
So while that might not be a pattern per se, it's also something that I kept in mind that in case I get thrown again, see what she does afterwards. And her throwing a, a low fan is one action and something to bear in mind in case she does it again in the future. And right, let's carry on. I wonder if reversal teleport can punish that fatal blow. So, that's the third time she's hit me with back one four, low amplifier fans, and she's jumped. So, that's literally her offense. That's, you know, blatantly there, so there's something that I can exploit later. Whether I do or not, we will see. Your fate rests here. Round two, fight. Yeah, backdash jumping is a fair one. To answer your pop quiz, the answer was actually two. I actually did it randomly because I felt it was a good idea uh, to catch her off guard. I wasn't done with any real thought or manner or any real reason. Including the Amplified, I went fully committed into it and it didn't pay off. Got lucky that I didn't get punished. But sorry guys for the people who thought it was legit and calculated. Hey Rough Diamond, how's it going? Hope you are well. Earn my respect. And there we go, Amplify fans into jump again. Now, bear in mind that what we talked about, back one four into low fans and then jump in, that makes my wake up up free a really, really horrible decision because I already know that this is a pattern and that's not the way I'm... <laughs> Stan cussing me out in this chat, respected better to be better than that random. We all have our bad days, Dan. We'll have a bad days. But yes, Blue, that's the fourth jump in a row. I should have known better not to wake up. But at that point in time, I looked at my health. I hadn't woken up at this point. Maybe the out three will catch him out. But really, I should have used more reason. Gav says, everything you do, you must have a reason behind it. Didn't show it in that example. That's true. To be fair, he's holding that. He's holding me to my own standards. So I can't complain. You know, that's just the way it is. No, don't ban Dan, he's, he's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> Listen, I remember Cap's lessons. <laughs> so, that bad decision of waking up at 3 actually cost me the match. But, I got the information there of what I found at this point was we have a confirmed pattern of back 1 4 into the low amplified fans. And then if that hits, jump. Um, the down free into throw, a potential pattern. Uh, keep an eye on when she forward throws, whether she throws a low fan or not. Um, wake up rolling after I first knocked her down. Um, and yeah, those were the main things I picked up from the first match. So a lot of the times in a set, especially a short set, most of the information is going to be uh, attained in the first round and eventually the first match. So then matches two and three is going to be all really about um, exploiting those patterns or adapting to finding solutions to things that's causing you issues. Every day a bad day with Scorpion, jeez. Right, yes, mind game round two and three. So, now I'm going to head into match two. Bear in mind about the stuff that you said already. So, going to match two, um, again, 
analyze Katana player, see what kind of patterns that she has. Is there anything new that we find? Um, does she change anything? Is there things that I'm not doing? Let me know what you think. Blow combo. <laughs> Sad times. Shout out to Fatal Blows. Just as a quick point, bleeding into another lesson, but when you get to this kind of health in a match, that's when you need to be your most coolest and most calmest to make the right decision in order to win. Simple as that. Um, that will be more covered in emotional and mental composure. Pop quiz. One, if you thought that teleport was random. Two, if you think that teleport was on purpose, planned, calculated. One for the random teleport. One for the random teleport. You missed the teleport. Jeez. Alright, let me rewind it for you guys a little bit. So, one for random, two if yours planned or calculated. Um, the only new thing I see from her is sometimes trying to jump over you in a cross up way instead of just neutral jumping after you block. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, oh, we're getting a split this time. Ones and twos, so. <laughs> Wait, oh, so now people are converting from ones to twos. Yeah, everyone's copying blue. <laughs> So everyone went from random until Blue said it was on purpose and then everyone now says that it's on purpose. Okay. You knew she would throw the fans again too because she tried to bait the fan. Nice read. Wait, oh, it was a read. So too. I wonder why. Yeah. Okay. I'll really answer later. Round two. Fight. Turns. Scorpion player predicting something. In I'll finish you quickly. This is definitely Sarang. Ouch, Mark. Damn. Final round. Fight. <laughs> argue whether she plays katana or not after class. Hello. 
Mark is timed out yet again. Poor guy. Right. Match two. Goes to Scorpion. Any certain observations that you guys may have noticed? Uh, on both sides. I mean, there's the patterns that we kind of had an idea of in the first match. Was there anything more confirmed? Um, in the second match, um, any kind of. Jeez, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, stop abusing your powers. <laughs> this is like important. People gotta learn this. People gotta be in the class and know this. Anyway. Um, so she was doing back one four staggers, then next time she was doing back one four and Fun Low Fan to catch you out. Uh, poking to grab a lot. Yep. Um, predictable jump because she had no health. She only uses two strings. And yet again, first knockdown she rolled. And stealing turns by mashing while minus. Yep, indeed. Now that one I'm not really annoyed about because that's down to me and down to my execution. I've got to enforce those plus frames and if I don't enforce them and the opponent steals my turn by mashing then that's on me. Yeah, keeps working out to get out of pressure. <laughs> Minus three can I use a punish right down down. She really wants to be an offensive rather than then defensive. Yeah. Um definitely sense that she was becoming more uncomfortable uh, when I was on the front foot. But overall she played the same as the last match. So it's because of that patterns of play that we noticed from round one and the first match. When you kind of start adapting to some of those things, um, if an opponent doesn't adapt or doesn't change, it just makes the match easier for you um, to exploit. Um, she wants to be offensive, but she plays Katana. No worries, Molly. That's uh, unfortunate that that's happened, but. Yeah, that kind of sucks. <sighs> Jeez, Sarang is going on a power trip. Anyway, right. Decent stuff. So, I'm now going to review match two. And I'll go through the fins that I saw, forts, etc. Alright, so back here. A bit further back. Right. So, at this point, if Sarang is behaving, you should look at her match history and have us analyse her match. Pick one where she lost. Wow. I'm not that cool, Dan. Okay, at this point, though, no. another down three into throw. That's a confirmed pattern at this point. That's something that she always does. So, that's something that I need to exploit. Um, I need to have a neutral duck, or I need to... Um, do the down to KB or you know if I want to tech the throw I guess but essentially yeah I've got to do something I block have so you won't see my matches <laughs> I did say I was the worst student wow down 3 into throw is quite a few of Katana players well yeah down 3 is her fastest poke so it makes sense most other people use down ones. And yeah, she did always use forward throw as well. Um, and I do think that's a general thing. Most players do like to do forward throw because they walk up to you and it's natural when you're walking up to someone, you're holding forward as you throw. Yo, Joe, how's it going, man? Good to see you here. 
just doing some um, pattern recognition so watching the match a set that I had and we're just looking at the kind of things that Kitano is doing and what we can do to exploit them Happy to try with Jay. <laughs> Alright, good point, good point. <laughs> Micro ducking standard one is an option too, but I never do that. <laughs> Pat recognition, I wish I could do that. <laughs> Right. If you remember in the first match when I said when she forward threw me, another thing that she did was she threw a low fan um, as I was getting up. So now this is the second time that she has done this. So therefore, that's something that is probably a pattern that she does. <clears throat> so therefore, next time I might be able to exploit it. Maybe try like a work up, wake up teleport, um, something like that. Lots of people can be more proud, wow. Um, you could jump back and react to the fan and teleport, yep. Right, we will see. Really wish I could firm that combo, but never mind. Alright, so that time I got a lame Anzia, but it's something. Could have been a lot better, but hopefully it's something I can do better at. <laughs> I need to, Gav needs to work on his confirms. Yeah, I do, uh, Dan. You weren't here, but I did apologise for my play. He was definitely rusty, but doing alright. Yes, I know that would have been a kill, but never mind. Right, pop quiz answer. Um, well, actually, before I get that, uh, am I playing Katana? No, I'm the Scorpion. Katana's the person we are analysing. Yeah, apparently, I'm like a heathen and a heartless person for jumping into uh, Scorpion. Um, I'm essentially worshipping the devil now. But, anyways, um, pop quiz time. I asked. Um, whether you thought that teleport was random or whether it was on purpose for those who decided to copy blue um, you are correct the teleport was done on purpose it was not random and the reason being is because there was a pattern that I spotted that I haven't mentioned as of yet and no one else has kind of mentioned as of yet either in the chat. Um, just to be fair, it's not an easy one. So, the reason why it's a calculated teleport is I need to go all the way back to the start of the match, the start of the first match. So, pay attention to what happens in like the f very first exchanges, in the very first match. So those few seconds there, after the initial bit of dancing as every match starts off with, um, she threw a fan and then she waited about one and a half to two seconds before she threw another fan. So, threw a fan, blocked or did nothing for about one and a half to two seconds, then threw another fan, and then blocked again, did nothing for one and a half seconds to two seconds, and then she threw out a string. 
The previous Scorpion player of a teleport hits is always intentional if it's blocked input error. <laughs> so, if you pay attention again. So, fan, one, two, one, two. So, at that point in time, I'm thinking that when it comes to distance play, when she throws a projectile, one and a half to two seconds, she'll have a block and not do anything, but then she'll start moving again, start and let go of block. And then I test this theory at this point in the second match um, with a spear. So after she throws me, fan, let be a hit. Now if you notice the timing, I literally waited about one second, just after more than one second before throwing out the spear, because I felt if she does do something between one and a half to two secs, um, the spear will hit at that point. So, that's why the spear hit. So when it comes to the bit at the end of the first round, uh, my so-called random teleport, I waited for the fans because we were at a distance and I knew I had the health to take it. And then literally counted up to two seconds. And then at the point after she threw the second fan, counted two again and then did the teleport. So we'll go over it. So throw the fan. One, two, one, two. And it hits. Power of pattern recognition. Round two, fight. Right at this point, I must. I'm not gonna lie. I was getting a little bit tilted because I know she's doing down three into throw, and I'm not doing anything about it. The throws doesn't actually piss me off. It's just the fact that I know she's doing it and I'm not doing anything about it. Just taking a throw for no reason. But anyway. Imagine my combo dropped. Yeah, I know. That would have been sad times. That, um, if you remember earlier on, in the very first match, I mentioned when she threw me forward. Um, she threw a low fan um, as I was getting up and she did that again in the second match um, and so when that opportunity came again and she threw me again I saw the low fan I just did a EX teleport as I got up and luckily for me it hit down three into taking away your plus frames I hate it here this is irritating to watch <laughs> I mean, the thing is, regarding plus frames, at the end of the day, it's up to you to enforce them. The opponent is not there to respect them. Um, I do say this for people who complain about mashes. It's not your job to... It's not the opponent's job to respect your play. It's your job to enforce your respect on them. Um, and I wasn't doing it, so... That's on me. That's something I've got to improve on. I get the feeling I was getting hit by the voice overhead over and over and I did nothing about it. Let me play against the scorpion. <laughs> Maybe. I could have done something better about that roll, uh, that makeup. Even. Complain about matches is their own fault. They can match <laughs> pretty much. Yep. I'll 
Before well, that's leave Cyborg on the right, but it's sub zero. Yep. Final right, round. final round. <coughs> Predictable pattern now. Yep. So, I got something there with a down two. Down two is something, better than nothing. But I know I probably could have got more, but at least now I'm doing something about the pattern. Um, so. And uh, yes, Blue, well spotted. Uh, drop that combo, we sucked. Now, usually, most times I would have done a combo to keep her in the corner, but because she already used her bar on waking up and she wouldn't be able to break away, and the damage I'm going to do from this combo is going to um, kill, I figured, um, you know, just go for the high damage combo. Don't do enough forward free into grabs. Do you know what? It's because I was kept on getting poked out, I just felt. I'm just not going to chance it. That's the main reason why I didn't do it. Um, but at this point, I'm not going to lie. I really wanted to win with the air throw. Because I think that move is cool. One of the best looking moves in the game, my opinion. So, I deliberately decided to put myself into jump distance to make attempts at the jump. Or throw a projectile. Now, if she threw a projectile then I can block it and then I'll wait one second and jump based on the pattern of her not doing anything for one and a half to two seconds um, and see whether I'll nail the air grab there if she jumps in then I'll react and jump in to an instant air grab and therefore get the win but as we can see in this round the former happens fans block one second jump and that's game Best that can move is an ancestral command grab. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to match three. And match three is where there's a variation change and the katana switches to fanfare. Now when it comes to pattern recognition, um switching variations can throw you off because obviously you're dealing with a different moveset. Um, so there are still some things that you will still be able to exploit or read because there's some general styles of play that you will always see. But sometimes it can get a bit trickier and you might need to do a reanalysis of an opponent's play in that match or in that round and then literally try and adapt within like the next two rounds. Yeah, exactly. Fanfare is going to change the pattern a lot because no low fan into jump. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a different style of play, but there might still be things we'll be able to take advantage of. So again, uh, review the match. Let me know what you see, if you see anything. Now they're going to jump and float constantly. Yeah. 
those grabs. <laughs> Round two, fight. Seems like they didn't know what to do without their low fan, to be honest. <laughs> Proven right. <laughs> See, you're starting to know the patterns. Jump into float, yep. Did I teabag Katana? No. <laughs> now she's mashing in a panic. Okay, and that is round three. So, my advice is Katana would go back to fearless. Wow. Why are you all attacking? <laughs> okay, fine. Ah, uh, this is not going to end well. Anyways, what did you guys notice? Third round, third match. If there is anything new to notice. Can you even apply pressure in fanfare? Um... Your pressure will be more based on staggers, really, so it wouldn't be a continuous offense. You'd be doing like full strings and then cutting them short into like pokes and throws, really. Still doing those back one full staggers and trying to steal turn or down three immediately after. If it does hit, she grabs. She also wasn't committing to her jump ins because they were just jump twos with no follow up. Jumped a lot more without low fan. Damn, are you attacking Dan for knowing the answers, lastly? <laughs> uh, still mashed down three into grabs. They got punishing with that with down four. Uh, yeah, I'm saying what I'm seeing. Indeed, those are all my instructions. Tell me what you see. This is the point of pattern recognition. I saw you kept using Spear in the first round because you knew she was going to square wave at one point. Yeah, it was in my mind that she might throw it out there. Um, and she wasn't doing anything to punish it either, so... That was the idea I was working with. Uh, she was panicking because she was also doing random floats back to back. Dan is that student that raises his hand and asks the teacher with detailed responses when the rest of the class is just goofing off. <laughs> Dan getting a world defender. <laughs> Dan being silenced. Damn. Okay. Um, all right. What I'll do is I'll go over the match. Although to be honest, there wasn't really a lot to go over. Um, third match. Let's see. That's the second. Right. So on to the third match. Okay then, but honestly I was that student actually in school, which is much much worse, that's why I recognise the pattern, see what I did there. Nice, clever. So, with this match, I sense back one four into like a poke or a jump will be like the key thing. Now I could have challenged each time she staggered back 1-4, one, 
but I did fear uh, the KB. No one likes to be crushed and blowed, so therefore I decided to just be a little bit more patient. And if she pokes again, then I'll retaliate with my own poke, like down four. Uh, or maybe I could have used the mid forward three. <laughs> By the way, uh, future reference in case you didn't know, that's generally the right time to break away from the scorpion combo. Most people break away after teleport, but in case you didn't know, if you break after the 1-1 one, one before confirming into spear, that's the optimal time. So I'll show you in a second, it comes up. So at this point here, it's the best time to break away. Because what happens is Scorpion's Spear will throw out and it won't hit. And he is stuck there for an eternity. Which gives you like 5 years for you to whiff punish him with whatever you want. Um, luckily for me, she didn't punish me at this point. But any other player, yeah. Any other opportunity that comes around definitely should uh, be a full combo punish each time. Yeah, easy way to take the round. Because the gas fan is going to snatch my wig after stream. Why? <laughs> okay. Anyway. Next round. After the spear misses, you do the back one four two crush and blow, right? Yeah, you can do that, or you can do like back one four into like fan lift into a longer combo. Um, but yeah, literally, you can punish with whatever you want at that point in time. Round two, fight. <laughs> Now that's technically a waste of a bar, only doing like 15% but I just wanted to push her in a corner so I valued um, positioning over damage at that point in time but I probably could have done more. That was a hard read, I'm just going to be honest there. Drop the combo, which sucks. Uh, could have whiff punished that. Could have whiff punished that. Could have confirmed that. Probably could have won the match four times in a row now. Could have confirmed that to a full combo. This again was a hard read. I kind of expected her to jump out of the corner. And that was the end of that set. You can't do anything when Katana does down 4 into fan. I can, I just kind of chose not to. I was just being extra cautious. Um, just not to, you know, take anything. I just accept your damage, I guess. Um, what's the ideal thing for a fan for Katan to do in this matchup? Since there isn't the low fan to do mix ups, they have to go for jumping small, and obviously that led uh, to the in air grab. Um, yeah, now Katana's jumps are generally hard to anti air, so it's not too bad to just jump in as Katana. Um, generally, you have to, it's a weird one. You kind of have to play within the range of your back two and then do a lot of basically staggering into throws and guessing it's where you can be your openings and then punish whatever Scorpion is going to make because I'm not the best example because as you can probably see I don't play like most of the um, Scorpions that you see in Combat League. I mean you probably didn't even see a single teleport council in that entire set 
so I might not be the best person to ask regarding this matchup but I like to think that most scorpions would like to teleport at some point so if you can stand in a range where teleport is not easily scouted from a fan I think that's going to be her best point so maybe it's just better to use fearless in this matchup I believe so because um, you kind of got the mix up as well and you've got amplified fans to keep yourself safe while an extra option of adding pressure up, up close so gas punishing could be better you should start punishing bullies by fishing out detentions hmm. I know Gab is yellow teleporting you only saw one yellow teleport in that set any one and that's the one that I made the others were all calculated um, but anyway hopefully you guys got something from taking part in this analysis um, and this is kind of the thing that I mean about pattern recognition is that once you kind of see these fins in the early set I mean we saw a lot of fins just from like round one and then the end of the first match and going forward you can gain a lot of information from paying attention to your opponent and what they're doing and just asking yourself certain questions like um, what they do in when they knock you down, what they do when they are knocked down, what they do after a certain string is blocked, etc, etc. So, is there always an answer to every pattern though? I'm gonna guess probably not. Um, there'll be some things that certain characters can do in order well, basically that means that you can't do anything about it. Um, there might be some scenarios where there's something that you can do something, but it's um, a high-risk read that you have to make. Um, but essentially what I was trying to get you guys to see is that once you kind of start noticing things, you um, how you can add that to your gameplay and then essentially you turn a match in your favour. Um, do I have a pattern? Everyone has a pattern. Um, even the best of the best um, has a pattern. It's just a lot harder to see it. When you play someone that's on a higher level than you, um, it's a lot harder to see their patterns and you exploiting them. Um, for example, like when I used to play Foxy back in MKX, there are certain things he used to do as Kung Lao um, that I couldn't do anything about. Even though I know he was going to do them, I just couldn't do them. And it took me numerous games for me to actually catch on. However, if I did something once to him, he would establish that as my pattern and then he would have a counter the, sec the very next time I do that. Um, so it does vary from player to player, but everyone does have some form of pattern. Um, just some are harder to see. Some people do... do it, do patterns deliberately to condition you to block or act a certain way to then reveal their real strategy later and I know the chat just went unload so let me just catch up quickly next time do Dan's Nightwolf patterns um, yeah basically the main point is adapting to habits of opponents exactly what Mark says uh, will I do any of your patterns blue who knows um, I have no pattern yes you do Dan <laughs> I always have a grab on shoulder bash. Um, the times that I've noticed you play Nightwolf Dan, um, you would do a string into Amplified Arrows first, but then after Amplified Arrows, you always follow up with a string into a command grab. Or you would do 1-1 one, one stagger first, and then 1-1 one, one command grab, and then with that with, then you would do 1-1-1. One, one, one. Um, let's see. It's helpful seeing how many agree with Mark the Armour Masher. Mm -hmm. Um, man, this chat is going crazy. I can't catch up. 
Gav tell me privately don't blurt it out publicly. Hey, do you know what? Um, it is what it is. It's up to the people that's got to do something about it. Or you can take it as, okay, I've seen a pattern now. Maybe I need to go to the lab and come up with some extra strategies or new stuff in order to mix that in with what I'm currently doing to keep people guessing. Um, but the point is, adapting to your opponents is the key. Main thing I would advise for people to do is it obviously helps when you know your own character inside out so you don't have to think about what you're doing as your character but yeah you just look at your opponent and what they do in certain situa situations what they do when they are offensive what do they do when they are knocked down what do they do when they're on a defense um, do they wake up every time you're knocked down um, if they throw you forwards what is their plan afterwards um, if you knock them down and you know in the corner, do they always forward roll out, or is there certain things they do after a certain string is blocked? You know, there's many things, um, and you just have to kind of bear that all in mind in round one. And when you see some of these things keep on happening two or three times, that's when you know that there's definitely a pattern there. And then it's up to you to get that thing out of your head and onto your fingers and act on the solution or the counter to that problem. Is Corfin still moving with my eyes? Um, that is Paul, so he's not moving. So, hope you guys kind of enjoyed the different kind of lesson than usual being a bit more interactive than me just speaking to you for an hour. I owe you a set. Why do I owe you a set? <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> It was an invaluable lesson. Well, hopefully you're getting some value from it. Because I said you do. I'm better out of mind. Yeah, this is fun. Okay. Um, so... The mini lessons is going to be a bit similar. Um, it'll be like more match footage in order to review. Um, maybe a bit more of me talking to you guys but I'll be definitely getting you to interact as well um, but yeah um, and this is also something that you can take into other fighting games um, obviously they all have their own different moves and systems but in terms of like recognizing what your opponent does and how you can adapt within a short set um, is you know valuable to take and I'm not the kind of guy that will set homework or anything like that, but I would advise that when you next play matches, whether it's Combat League or a set, just see if you can pick up on one pattern your opponent is doing, like within the first match. Um, and then see what you can do about, you know, exploiting it. Because, um, as I said, it's not an easy skill to learn, it's not an easy skill to perform, but if you can start with just that one step and then eventually you can build up to it um, and identifying patterns match on match and then eventually you start getting solutions and then match on match you start implementing these solutions and then it will help you get your gameplay and f improve your gameplay for sure and especially those people who really struggle in adapting in a set especially like in the first to two, first to three like tournament setting this kind of exercise and steps will definitely help you go forward and get better at doing that kind of thing. So that's what I suggest. Don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I'm just suggesting. <laughs> oh, what the homework. <laughs> okay. 
anyway, I've taken a lot of your time. Um, thanks for stopping by. I hope this lesson was good. Um, I'll try and upload the archive on YouTube like as soon as I can for those who missed it. Um, can we get an essay or an assignment? <laughs> okay, um, Dan, write a 10,000 word essay as to why Melina is the best character in the MK franchise. With um, Harvard referencing, please, no plagiarism. Anyway, for those tuning in, um, thanks again. Um, next lesson will be definitely won't be a three month hiatus. Um, so it will be definitely soon. Probably, if not next week, definitely the week after. But when do you graduate? <laughs> I guess when I finish doing all the lessons, which is not that many left. So, yeah. Anyway, take care, guys. Thanks again, and catch you next time.